I stand atop Victor's shoulder with Fluffy at his side. His hand is placed between her ears, scritching absently as we walk. Kaz, Dr. Sabir, Dr. Gomez, and a familiar-looking woman walk on her other side. On our right walks Emiko Miyazaki with Miss Hunter a few paces behind her, wearing ridiculously heavy-looking armour, coloured silver and teal with royal blue gauntlets. The only part of her skin that are visible are the area around her eyes and mouth, her nose and cheeks being protected by guards that jut from the helmet she wears. It has been explained to me that there was an attempt made to place the armour on the hover trolley, with her and Emiko's other possessions, but that overloaded it. It must be as heavy as it looks. Turning his head to the one member of the group that I've not been introduced to, Victor says, I really enjoy your playing in the piazza the other week. I take it you're Amiel Nextly? Ah, she was the busker who played the sad songs. Seemingly surprised to be addressed, she turns her head to Victor. Um, yes, that's me. I remember you two. You stopped to listen. I'm both tipped right. Thank you. Victor weighs a hand. You played really well and I enjoyed it. Thank you. It looks as if congratulations are in order. Who is it that asked? What's he talking about? The three of them all reflexively move their respective right hands to their lefts, drawing my attention to the matching rings they wear on their second to last finger. Kaz smiles smugly. I asked. The other two look slightly embarrassed. Forgive my ignorance, but asked what, I probe. Kaz popped the question, Cap. They're engaged, answers Victor, turning his face up to mine. I have to think for a moment before I'm able to make sense of that. I thought... Aren't Terrans monogamous? I ask uncertainly. Victor chuckles and answers, Mostly we are, but you know our general attitude is live and let live. Polly's ain't hurting no one, so we ain't gonna tell them they gotta conform to monogamy because they're offending our sensibilities. Before turning back to the free and saying, Good luck with the wedding, you free. They smile appreciatively. I think for a moment before saying, I'm sorry to have to take Kaz away from the two of you for so long. Will you be alright without her? Dr. Sabir smiles, somberly. It's not ideal, but we'll call whenever our schedules all line up and she has FDL comm signal. It'll give us time to plan the wedding. We might even shop around for a clinic to get a chart from, though that's not certain yet. Uh, are you not able to have children naturally? I ask, slightly unsure if I'm being rude. Kaz laughs. We could. Amal and I could get our reproductive cycles reactivated very easily, and Lord could father a child with either of us. We've all agreed that... That's not how we want to do it. If we're going to have kids, we want ones that are an equal mix of all three of us. Our kids. Not mine and Lou's, or Amy's and Lou's. Mine. Amy's and Lou's. Can't do that the natural way. I chew over that for a bit. Dr. Gomez turns to Victor. You really don't mind about me taking Glom? I know Fluffy's okay with it, but... Victor shakes his head. I can't imagine a better home for him. Lou's told me about all the prima donnas you've had to chase off. Sorry about that. If you're happy to take him and Fluffy's happy with you taking them, I'm happy. Honestly, the only reason I didn't suggest you or Lula adopting any of them myself was because I assumed, if it was feasible, you suggested. Didn't want to pressure you. Dr. Gomez looks pleased and there is a brief silence as we walk. After a while, Emiko says, I'm glad that we're finally going to be underway. I don't believe Merc Beast weaning has ever been given as an official reason for a delay before. Probably ever. Not just as long as the Odiaris existed. I know it's only been a week since the last of the other arrangements were made, but that is a week in which, however unlikely, the species may have died out from one thing or another. Kaz whips ahead to Emiko and says, Can you talk about that with these three here? They're not under NDA. Emiko smiles. They're not idiots, are they? I'm sure, even if you didn't tell them, they were able to work it out. As long as they don't go sending the story to a tabloid site or banding it around the gal net. Well, there'll be no need for ODR officers to knock on their door, will there? She just spoke so sweetly, yet, from the look on Dr. Gomez's, Sabir's, and Ms. Nixel's faces, it's clear that they understood the threat. Turning her attention to me, Emiko asks, You're certain about the stops? Zindequin, Neonisia, and Nova Fenoscandia? If you divert us around any of those, it will cause delays, as a line I need to wait for the personnel, currently making their way to those planets, to meet us on another or find replacements for them. I smile and look forward at the gates of Behiri Ya Kakazini coming into view. Quite sure, Emiko. No need to fret. Causing a satisfied nod from her. I assume I'll have the opportunity to meet the three I haven't yet at the party tonight? I query. You should do. I've made it clear that it will be a good chance to get to know the crew, so they oughtn't to hide in their rooms on deck four. She answers. Good. I'll look forward to it. 
We reach the gate and are surrounded by an escort of fully armoured and armoured soldiers who walk us across the barracks grounds. It's a little ironic that they're willing to allow a merc beast to roam freely about town with only Victor to guard her, but here in the place on the planet where she'd most quickly be neutralised if she were to suddenly rampage, she needs a full guard. We enter the hangar and, before we begin climbing the boarding ramp, Kaz hugs her fiancé and fiancé goodbye, with not a few tears. We board the ship, waving goodbyes at Dr. Sabir and Gomez, as well as Miss Nixail. I have to get to the bridge to take us up, but the rest of you can stay here to wave them off as we ascend if you like, I say addressing the group. There are smiles and nods from all of them, as I make my way through the starboard side door. Emiko and Miss Hunter have no one to wave goodbye to, but make no move to leave. They probably want to admire the view as we take off. Later. Captain on bridge, sings Twiller as I walk through the door. The bridge crew stand and render their respective species salutes. I dip my head and slightly extend my wings, indicating them to return to their posts. I always felt such pomp a little unnecessary on a civilian ship, but was overruled by my clan mother on the question of whether to do away with it. I step atop the captain's perch and have my communications officer patch me through to local aerospace control. This is Captain Dequile of the Bright Plume, requesting permission to take off. We hear you, Captain. Sending a route out of system now. The route appears on the display in front of me, and, double-checking that there are no issues with it, I lock it in. Route confirmed. Confirmed. You are clear for takeoff. Twiller begins our ascent out of the hangar, and the Zanzibari Vista is available for a few minutes, outside the front window, before we angle upwards and begin our atmospheric exit. I have greatly enjoyed myself on this planet. I wonder if I'll ever return. That evening, ship time. Having brought the ship to warp and made my way from the bridge to the central section of Deck Zero, I enter the canteen to see it crowded with nearly every crew member. With the new additions, humans are now the single most numerous species aboard. It's interesting to see how they dominate the room. Emiko holds court over a crowd composed of about nine different species. Miss Hunter stood close behind her, Thankfully, out of her armour, I would have to think how much more uncomfortable she'd make people if she were still dressed like that. Victor and Toon seem to be acquainting themselves with what I presume to be the ODR's Garden World contingent from Zandabar. Lieutenant Loper is talking animatedly to Quidge and Jubob about something. The Zomberis are having a pleasant chat with the Shings and a few others. Dr. Mink is sitting nearby wearing what seems to be her trademark glower. Krish and Hasakara are sitting with Shaanza, Igthan, Huan Pam, and Hamtonio. Laughing about something. Even Shaanza seems at ease. She's typically one of the more anxious members of the crew. Then my eyes alight on the table, at which sit three... Humans? Certainly two of them are human, but the third. She looks the wrong height to be an adult, but the wrong proportions to be a child. None of there should be a child on a mission like this. They aren't talking with anyone, even each other. Let's fix that. I made my way to the table and raised my wing greeting. Hello, you three. I don't believe we've met. Might I join you? Seeming a little taken aback, they nod an assent and gesture to the empty stall. Nilo Hatathili, says one. Krong Fan, says the second. Olga Petrikov, says the third. The very short one, I'm not entirely sure, is the same species as the other two. Taqual, a pleasure to meet all of you, I answer, choosing to forego my clan name and rank in the interests of modesty. I turn my attention to Ms. Petrikov and carefully start... Forgive me, but are you a te- Yes, I'm Terran. Yes, I'm human. Yes, I'm Homo sapiens. Yes, I'm an adult. It's called Acolondomplasia, or more generally, dwarfism. Yes, I could get it treated with gene therapy. No, I don't want to, she interrupts wearily. I sincerely apologise, Miss Petrikov. I didn't mean to offend you, I say. This is clearly a sore spot for her. It's fine. It's just... I have to have the same conversation with everyone I meet. The same questions every time. I know it's not your fault. Garden worlds tend to produce very genetically homogenous populations, and garden worlds tend to correct all irregularities with intervention, so you're not used to people who look so divergent from the species norm. Don't worry about it, it's more insulting when I have to have the conversation with Terrans. I choose not to ask why she does not wish to be treated, what with the difficulty she must face with being shorter than me, in a society where most people aren't. Acordroplastic. Given the exhausted way she answered the rest of my questions before I'd asked them, it would probably be irritating. Instead I ask, what is your profession, Miss Petrikov? It's very unusual that I have to ask the job title of a person aboard my ship. This is the first time I've had anyone employed aboard that I didn't personally hire. I'm an analyst, 
When we get to AG1079026 3B, it'll be my job to lead the interpretation of all the data we get back from the orbital scans and ground team. I won't be going down myself, she winks. I nod. What about you two? Mr. Hatathili? Mr. Fan? Well, we're observers from the UTC's humanitarian corps. It's our job to treat any injuries, make sure the species gets treated humanely, and report any incidents of violation to the GU, ODR, and UTC, responds Fan. I'm sure we'll appreciate your efforts. Our existing medics wouldn't be cleared for death excursions, I say mirthfully. Hatathili leans conspiratorially across the table to me and says, Hey, the Qual? How much do you know about the captain? I'm about to say that I am the captain, but stop myself. This might be interesting. A fair bit. Why? What have you heard? I heard she gave Mistress Miyazaki a telling off during the briefing, laughs Hatathili. I heard she's the original pilot of the ODR security officer program. I heard that the last week we've been waiting to set off was because there was a Merc beast at the uni that she was waiting to bring aboard, as Fan. I heard she rode that Merc beast to the rescue when they fought those pirates they brought in. Lars, Ms. Petrikov. You can't believe everything you hear. All true, I say with some amusement at the look of disbelief that instantly falls over their faces. Though in her defence, the Merc beast was brought onto the ship by CSS Taylor. She was originally very against keeping it and only reluctantly agreed, after he pointed out that the rules allow any and all pet types that are not actively aggressive to sapiens, and... Well, the first time she escaped confinement, she proved herself tame. Just about. All three of them look back at me with death order distrust. How would you know all that? Asks Petrikov. Well, I'm very plugged into the goings-on aboard this ship. The captain and I are quite close. Furring his brow, Hatathili asks, What's your job? To Qual. Just then, Victor shouts, Cap! Causing every pair of eyes facing me to widen, mine twist into a mute smile. I see you're making friends, he says, drawing up to the table. Just so, Victor. These three and I were just discussing your unorthodox choice of companion animal, I respond, still mirthful. Oh, they're asking about Fluffy? He turns his attention to the others, smiling. You're all welcome in Triple M anytime you want to meet her. Victor, calls Toon from across the room. Oop, gotta go. See you around. He smiles, turning to leave. They stare disbelievingly from his back as he walks away back to me. It is a rather euthoric feeling to have pulled the wall over the eyes of a table full of Terrans. We've been tricked, we've been backstabbed, and we've been quite possibly bamboozled, laughs Hatathili. Indeed, you have been, I nod. Why didn't you tell us you were the captain? asks Fan. I was interested in the candid things you'd say when you didn't know. I hope you can forgive the deception, I say with a Terran wink. I can't believe a garden world had just managed to trick all three of us, sighed Petrikov. Astonishing. Still smiling, I answer. Don't feel too bad. According to Mr. Taylor, I have the dubious distinction of being an honorary death welder. I stand to leave before turning back to them. If you wish to be astonished some more, well, you might try mingling a little. Garden Wilders might surprise you. You're a little unapproachable huddled in this corner like this. With three looks of mild embarrassment, they begin getting up from the table to make their respective way towards groups they might mingle with. I hope they get on well enough with everyone. It could be a long voyage otherwise. <laughs>